Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of our show, Stairway to Paradise. Today's episode will be a sequel to the last one which was about death. And if you remember, for those who saw it, we ended it off with the idea that death should not be negative or negatively associated in our minds because it facilitates our meeting with Allah, our beloved, the one we love the most. And so we ended it saying that this one will be about the love of Allah. And before we get into that, let's look at the answers we got to the following question. To you, what does it mean to love Allah? To thank Him for everything that He gave us. It's to be dedicated towards your religion, family. To want to sacrifice yourself for His sake. Basically to follow everything that He says. To do your best to live in accordance with what, it's, with what God wants us to do. To be more committed to, his, um, to, what, to what He wants from us to do. Is to fully, fully submit yourself. To feel that without Him you're nothing. Uh, to be ready to give up everything and anything for, for Him and for, for Him only. Okay, we're back, and we have Matthew Ingalls here again, Tariq Al-Guhari. Uh, some people might be watching for the first time, that's why I reintroduced you, but this episode is a sequel to what we agreed to do. Remember last time we had an episode about death, and we decided to not leave it on a negative note because the intention of remembering death as a Muslim is a positive one, is to make us more human, to make us more intimate with Allah, to make us look forward to meeting Allah, to make us look forward to paradise. That's the purpose of this show, Stairway to Paradise. So last time the question we asked the viewers was, how often, well not the viewers, but some of the people in the streets in Cairo, those who spoke English, which was a little challenging, but alhamdulillah we did find quite a few after a strenuous struggle. The question was, <laughs> how often do you remember death? Or how, how often do you think about death? And today we had a different question, but again, we're going to tie the two together. The question for this episode was, to you, what does it mean to love Allah? You know, how do you understand that? So before we do so, why don't we, uh, from your perspective, what's the relationship between last episode about remembering death and today's episode about loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think last week, or last episode, we... Uh uh, mention half the story. There's another half to the death story and that's what happens after death. So maybe this episode we're completing that and then ultimately what death is is that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. This is the ultimate uh, victory for the believer is to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be with the Creator. Right. The one who created us and, and gave us life and gave us health and, and all these things. To go back to our source. Exactly. And that's what we're distracted from ultimately in this world. It's Allah. So when we talk about the, the dunya distracts us from death, what we really mean is this the, the, the dunya, the trappings and the entertainment, all these things distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Because theologically we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a necessary being. Right. And that everything else is contingent on Allah's being. And if everything else is only in essence, is only in existence because Allah Ta'ala creates it, allows it to be in so existence. So it's not really there in the exactly. most real sense of things. Exactly. Mm. So when we do away with that, all that's left is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. SubhanAllah, and that's why verses in the Quran about, for example, Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. Exactly. Everything shall perish except His magnificence, His... Uh, halik is ism fa'al, mm. the verbal noun, meaning that everything is in a state of perishing. Not that everything will, be, will perish, everything is in now a state. And He's recreating it as we speak. At each moment. And that's the Muslim understanding, that Allah is recreating things. In other words, they don't exist in and of their own, He's maintaining them. Exactly. So He's created this minute, and then He's going to create another minute, or moment, and you know, a second in time. And everything, same with our skin, He's just, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continu continuously giving sustenance to and maintaining the universe within which is the human being who is not exempt from this maintenance. Yeah. I think getting to your question that you asked us. The link between the two. The link two. between the two. Right. Um, you hinted at the answer in your introduction just now actually. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you're aware. <laughs> uh, I think that there are a few blessed souls, very few blessed souls on this earth that their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great that they actually look forward to death. Not look forward like someone who's really sick or really in pain <laughs> wants it just to be over. Right. I'm saying they may even have the dunya to a certain extent. They may have any pleasure they need at their disposal. Could be rich, could be, could be you what, know, in that sense. Anyone, I'm saying. Right. Yeah, at any age, any stage okay. of health, whatever. But they, their love for Allah is so strong that it outweighs all this to such an extent that they can't even see this. SubhanAllah. They only see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as His mercy and His bounty upon them and that's who they want to meet. And that makes me think of Sayyidina Sulaiman, the Prophet Sulaiman, who was a king prophet. Mm. The Prophet was a king. Mm. But I'm sure you know the dunya was in his hand, not in his heart. Mm. 
And so we, we made this distinction last time, again, for those who may have not seen us or those who want to refresh their memories. We made a distinction between the dunya and the world in our English kind of lingo. So that people don't confuse when we say don't love the dunya, we're not saying don't love the world. You love your wife, you love your house, you love all these different things because they get you closer to Allah. But you love them for the sake of Allah and not more than Allah and His Messenger wasallam. That's why the Prophet said that none of you shall truly have belief or none of you shall believe not in the sense of faith versus you know not faith, disbelieving in Allah, in the sense of iman, the experiential faith, you know, tasting it in your heart, just living truly in accordance with what you believe in, you won't get that state until you love uh, Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Note the more than, so you can love other things, but you love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. In the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Walladina amanu ashadu hubban lillah," but those who believe love Allah far more intensely. The context was, as you know, that there are people amongst humanity, there are those who love these equals, these partners, these compeers, they love them the way Allah should be loved. So they love something else contingent, the way Allah, the only reality, should be loved. But those who believe, Allah goes on to say, love Allah far more intensely. But those who believe love Allah far more intensely, وَالَّذِينَ amanu ashaddu hubban lillah. I'm mentioning this because it's the Quranic verse that's relevant. And we have a, about a minute to wrap this up. Go to a break inshallah. But I also mention it because they can love other things. For the sake of Allah and nowhere near as much as they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll close this segment and be back after the break inshallah to look at this idea. It is a sequel to the one about death. How often do we remember death? Think about it. But ultimately as Tariq beautifully pointed out, there's a second half to the story. And that's what we're going to get back and look at inshallah after the break. So stay with us.